Hello everybody, Mr. Hinnon here for this little virtual lab. Um, I'm going to show you how to take your video and put it into Logger Pro so we can analyze it. So I've already taken video of a collision between two hover pucks, which I gave you in the, the previous kind of video. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here where it says insert. I'm going to go to movie and then I have to find it. I put it on the desktop. So I just have to scroll down until I find it. And I've got this hoverbuck collision in two dimensions. So I'm going to open that one up. Now, unfortunately, it always takes this program a little bit of time to actually eventually pull up the video. So we just have to kind of wait on it. Um, and then eventually what we're going to be doing is we're going to analyze the motion of each one of these hover pucks and use them to make graphs. We're going to end up with four graphs. What I'm going to have us do is we're actually going to do position versus time graphs so we can figure out velocity before and after the collision. Okay, so here's my video up. So I have this puck, the 249.5 gram puck, is going to start out stationary. I put it on the end of this little T intersection. Down here in the bottom, I can hit play, and you can see what happens. So it's just sitting there, and all of a sudden, the other puck's going to come flying in from over here. It hits it, and then it goes flying off. So that's the entire motion that I have, and then my foot. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll back till we're at the beginning of the motion. So somewhere in there, I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit. And I always kind of like to, I love this feature that I can kind of scroll forward. I'm going to start right there. So it's not quite on the screen. So I'm going to minimize this. Let's put it just on the screen. So I love this hover pucks because they have that soccer ball kind of shape to them. And that makes it really easy to kind of pinpoint what exactly is going on. So then we're going to come over to these little dots in the corner. We're going to click on them. And it's going to bring up a whole bunch of different options. One of the options we have to do is this ruler here. We have to set the scale. So we're going to click on that. And I always usually could put like a ruler in the background or a meter stick. Since I can actually see the floor tiles, I'm going to use the floor tiles. So I know going from one edge of a floor tile to the other edge. So I'm just clicking and dragging over here. And then I let up. It's going to draw a green line out there, and it's going to ask me how long that is. The default is one meter. It's not actually one meter. This is three-tenths of a meter, so I'm going to put in 0.3 meters and then press OK. Now it knows all the motions in there are to that particular scale. If I don't do that, it has no idea what exactly we're going on with the distances it's actually going to be traveling. The next thing we're going to use is we're actually going to hit this little crosshairs with a little dot on it. That's going to add points. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to click on the particular hover puck as it moves along. So starting down here, I'm going to start with the stationary one, the 249.5. I click on it. It makes a dot. But if you notice, it also moved one frame forward on our video. So then I click again, moves another frame. I click again. It moves another frame. Now, this puck is not moving, so I don't have to worry about it, but I keep clicking it until, boom, now it suddenly moves. So I don't want to click in the same spot. I want to move my crosshairs, try to put it about in the center of that center square. So it looks like about there, then somewhere about here, and then somewhere about there. Doing my best to kind of plot the motion of this puck. I'm just plotting the motion of the one that was stationary and just got hit. Now, the only downfall to this is it doesn't take into account the fact that this hover puck is probably twisting. So I'm just doing it as like a solid object. And then we've got, so there's the points for the hover puck getting collided. And we can kind of look at that. But now I need to rewind. And I want to do the same thing with this one, but I can't just click on it because it's going to assume that it's the same points of this one. So I need to add, I go to this one that has green and red dots, I need to add another set of points. So I'm going to say add point series. Now I click on my little crosshairs. Now when I do my crosshairs, 
you'll notice it actually put a red dot on here. So I'm going to follow this one with red dots. Red dot. Red dot. Red dot. And then it collided. And you can see that it definitely changed its motion afterwards. Because now I can actually read on here that this is 313.5 grams. And I'm going to still click about in the center of this thing. Looking at its motion after the collision. This is what, like I said, this is one of the things I like about these hover pucks. You can kind of get pretty close to the center of them. I think it looks like I can do one more of these. So that's pretty good. Gives us the motion before and after. So that's the video itself. So now if I rewind the video and I hit play, you'll actually see it'll kind of draw dots on that screen. But I don't want to actually use that. Instead, now that I have this, I don't need this video anymore. I'm going to come over. I'm now going to be looking at graphs. So the video likes the, the program likes to put all the points on one graph. I don't want it that way. So I need to kind of modify some stuff so I can actually do everything here. So the first thing I'm going to do over here where it has X, Y, X2, and Y2, I'm just going to click on that. I'm just going to select X. So this is the first hover puck, the one that was sitting there stationary, the lighter one. It basically is not moving, and then all of a sudden it moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the points when it's not moving. I'm going to do an R equals, which is linear fit. I do get a slope, but look at the slope. 5.27 times 10 to the negative 13. That's basically zero. We're going to treat that as zero. Then I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to move down towards my bottom corner and do a linear fit. And again, now I get a velocity. So I get negative 0.5192 meters per second. So the only reason it did that is it, the default is kind of to treat anything in the right as positive and anything the opposite is negative. So it moved in the negative x direction. So there's that graph. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this one. And then I'm going to insert another graph. This one, I want to make Y, so I can actually see what's happening here. Put it up here, make this graph a little bit bigger, and then kind of then notice the same thing, that it starts out that it's not moving. I'll do a little linear fit. Hey, this actually gave me a slope of zero. That's awesome. And then I'll go from there and kind of slide down, get my R equals. And this is now telling me that it moved in the negative y direction. So again, it kind of treats anything up as positive and anything down as negative. You can change this if you want to. I usually find that it's not necessary to actually change it. The other thing I could do if I really want to, if I click on this little thing, I can actually set the origin. I could have set the origin where the actual hover puck was and kind of looked at all the motion that way. That's just kind of a neat thing. Let's insert another graph. This one is now going to be x2. So x2 is now the motion of the second hover puck. I'm going to try to put these so I can kind of see all of them together. This one I can kind of see about that same time. So right around somewhere between 5.8 and 5.9 seconds, maybe about 5.84 seconds is when it collided. So about somewhere about there, I'm going to highlight over. I'm going to do a linear fit. So the puck was coming in in the negative x direction. And then afterwards, we have a slightly different shape. And so it changed there. So that's before and after. So this is going to be my bi and my bf. Hey, that's going to be important. And then let's shrink this a little bit. And let's insert, whoops, didn't want to do that. Let's insert one more graph. It likes to give me these velocity graphs. I actually find that the velocity graphs just aren't that useful, so I don't tend to use them. I like to use the X and Y graphs. I think they're much better. Ooh, I got a kind of random spot over here. So. 
I must have gone one step too far. So if you end up with random spots over here that you're like, hey, I don't know if that counts, here's a way to actually get rid of them is I think what happened is I took one more data point from my other one. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to come back to my graphs. See if that kind of affected anything. It says that Y was way down at that particular low point. So I'm not sure where that actually falls. I wonder if I accidentally added an extra little point without meaning to. sure what's going on with that. I'm going to see if I can auto scale this and kind of fix it a little bit. Nope, it doesn't look like it. I don't know what this point is over here. So I'm going to just kind of see if I can do my initial. There's my initial stuff. Do my little linear fit. I didn't have this happen to me before, so kind of surprised by it here. And there's my final in the Y. I don't actually want that point over there. So it's something that happened way at the very end. Ah, so really close to the end of my time. All of a sudden, I put another point on there. I accidentally click on my toe here. Ah, uh, there it is. I accidentally clicked a random point right there. That'll get rid of it. There we go. Now we got a better graph here. I wasn't sure what was going on. Didn't really change anything, but I just wanted to have a better graph as we were kind of doing stuff. Sorry for that extra little time period there. Um, and there. So what we've got for all this different bits of information it's back there is now I have the initial and the final velocity of the stationary hover puck and I have the initial and final velocity of the moving hover puck. And so what we should be able to do is look at does momentum stay conserved? Does the momentum before equal the momentum afterwards? And so that's one of the things in my little Google form that I'm going to be asking those, those questions. Hope you enjoyed this little video analysis of hover puck collisions. Take care.